Hello, Beatrice Mills, and thanks for accepting my invitation for this chat for the Reproducible Research Scott YouTube channel. Uh, can I call you Bea? Yeah. Oh, Bea. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's start with your introduction. So, hi, Hanier. Hi, everyone. Thank you for this invitation. Um, and so, I'm Brazilian, I speak Portuguese, and I am a PhD candidate in environmental sciences at the University of Sao Paulo. I also work as an arts director at Curso R, which is a, a teaching Brazilian company. Also, I am a co-organizer of Our Lady Sao Paulo, Saturday Sao Paulo and Latin Art. Check that out because it's going to happen this year. And I'm also a Tidyverse instructor certified by our, our studio. We will put the link on the description for the Okay, okay. At, ah, for letting uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, how, you know. How do you define reproducible research and why this is important for you? Mm. In my opinion, uh, our research is reproducible when other people, other researchers can reproduce its results when are given the original data set used and detailed information on how the study was conducted. I use code to write that information, these detailed steps that was, was taken. So uh, all the steps are documented in the code. Uh, I think it's important to do reproducible research um, so other researchers can reveal the, how the study was conducted, uh, look for anything that needs to be improved. And also I think it facilitates uh, if other researchers want to do a similar uh, study in a different context. They can look at the code and see how uh, they made the study, uh, which packages they use, and so on. Very cool. You are very, very famous among the R Brazilian user groups. <laughs> can you describe <laughs> how you first, your first contact with R? <laughs> so I was doing my master's in environmental analysis um, and my advisor told me that I needed to learn R to analyze the data that I was collecting. And at the time, I didn't know anyone that also programmed in, in R, like in the whole university, I didn't know anyone. So it was a pretty sad start. I tried like, I didn't know that our studio IDE existed, so I tried in the console, I, I didn't know uh, how to import data for the first place. I was like creating the vectors with my data, like <laughs> reaching all the data by hand because I didn't know how to import. So it was pretty sad in the beginning and I gave up for some time actually. And until I found out that the Our Ladies group in Sao Paulo was starting. So I reached out to them and I started to learn with the support of more people in this group. And that was the point that I really started to learn R before I was like, just just uh, suffering a lot to, to learn. And now you're pretty much running the R ladies groups in Sao Paulo, right? I mean, there's uh, other people, but. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a co-organizer. We have a lot, a lot of people helping to organize. I'm, I'm nice. not alone on, on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, but to say that from not be able to like import data, now you are you have your own R package um, called one of them is like Mananciais, which provides data related to reservoir in Sao Paulo region. So how did this R package start? Okay, so uh, this package, Mananciais, aims to facilitate the user of this public data about the level of the reservoirs uh, used to supply water in the region that I live, which is the metropolitan region of Sao Paulo. And this data is primarily available in a non-structured way, is a website of the, the government that you can uh, look for each day and get the data for, like for each day. <laughs> so you cannot like download a, a complete uh, data set of the, this data. So it's really difficult to, to analyze it. And I started to using this data in 2013. 
more almost 10 years ago because we had a water crisis going on in Sao Paulo and a lot of researchers, journalists, public managers needed this data to do their studies and to better inform the public and to make good decisions. So when I started to learn R, I found out that we could do web scraping. And in this package, I use web scraping and GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is awesome. Everyone is really nice. And I use GitHub Actions to run a script to update every day a spreadsheet with the complete data. So anyone can go there to my package website. You don't need to like install it to use. Uh, you can like just click on the link and download the data in CSV or in an Excel file. That's pretty good. So you became from not be able to import the data to provide the data for everyone to easily import. That's pretty yeah. cool. So well done. Uh, now that you are this R Jedi, what recommendations <laughs> do you have for someone that's starting their R journey today? So from the story that I told you, I think uh, the most important tip is to, rec uh, to, to connect with people from the R community. So you can try on Twitter looking for the hashtag R stats. There's a lot of people uh, interacting there about R. Uh, also, you can look at the website meetup.com and you can find online and in-person meetings. And like the, the our, our ladies meetups and much more. There's, there's a lot of our communities going on. Actually, there's a dashboard about our communities. I can send you the link and you can put Real it in the, on the description. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the reality of the meetups and other in-person meetings in Sao Paulo now that all the COVID restrictions is being lifted? Uh, are you back to have in-person events or? No, we used to have in-person events until March 2020, but with the start of the pandemia, all went online. And we actually have a lot of content in Portuguese actually, <laughs> uh, on our YouTube channel because we record the, the events, but we are not so... Um, um, done with the pandemic yet here in brazil it's, it's still a thing so i had COVID last week so i'm laughing but it's, it's really sad so we are not doing this these events yet but we were we were talking recently about making or trying to make um an, an event that is hybrid uh, because we think that we really want to get together again. I really miss uh, the people from the community, but we think that a lot of other people couldn't attend if we're in person. So we want to do, we want to try a hybrid event, but this hasn't like been a reality yet. We are like, we already found a venue that has uh, the infrastructure to do that. So we can like live stream it, but we haven't uh, decided the date yet. And for people that are in Sao Paulo that are really like a structured uh, course, or you say that you work for a company that provide our uh, courses. So how we, how people can get engaged, like at the moment, online classes or in-person classes? Or... Before the pandemia, the classes were in person, but since the, the pandemic, not the pandemic, but since the, the start of the pandemic, all the classes, uh, the courses are online. And as long as we were talking, we don't plan to go back to in-person um, because we see that a lot of our students now are not from Sao Paulo, are from another cities, are from regions in Brazil that usually don't have this kind of content. We want to like uh, plan a meeting, a per in person meeting, but just to get to know the students, talk about R, but not a course, maybe to students uh, show what they are up to and connect with us. 
and but not uh, in person in person courses yet. And I don't know if it would be a reality again. So yeah. So for everyone online, that will be <laughs> that's that's yeah. okay. We running a little bit off out of the time. And there's any other project that you want to share with us? Mm, yes. So I have been writing blog posts about R since 2019, but in Portuguese, my native language. Uh, so recently I decided to start blogging in English as well, because I think a lot of the content that I create in Portuguese would be useful to people that does not speak Portuguese. And English is the, the language that people uses the most uh, around in, in the R community. So I started a new blog with Quarto, uh, which is a new tool. It's like the new generation of our Markdown. And I'm creating content there in Portuguese and English. A lot of my old posts um, that I wrote in Portuguese, some of them I plan to to translate to English. And right now you can find uh, a blog post about how to create a blog uh, with Quarto. And I hope I can be comfortable someday to write in Spanish as well, because uh, I think uh, it would be a good, uh, a good asset for the Latin art community. And you can find my blog at beamilts.com but Haniel will put this on the description sure. as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and full disclosure, we are planning uh, not a video about Quarto, a long video, but to yeah. give more details online in the future. So thank you, uh, Bia, for your time and this joyful conversation. I hope you have a good day in Brazil. It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you have some happy hour of planet. And, <laughs> and you keep in touch. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Hanier. Have a good day too. <laughs>